Welcome to The Dental Brief, the world's direct, right-to-the-point podcast produced to get you the information you need to learn and grow your practice. To learn more about our guests and find links to information discussed on our show, visit our website, dentalbrief.com. On to today's episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Dental Brief. I have with me today uh, our guest uh, speaker, uh, Judy Bendit. Judy, say hello. Hey, how are you? I'm doing great. It's uh, lovely to have you here. And I say guest speaker. You're a speaker. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at your website. Uh, you're actually a uh, top speaker listed in Dentistry Today, correct? That's correct. And, yep, I just um, got my newest edition. I made it again another year. That's awesome. Great job. You must be doing something right. Give us a little information about yourself uh, and your background. So I was born and raised in a dental office. My dad's a dentist. My mom's a hygienist. Literally grew upstairs. Up, we lived upstairs above the office for many years. And I literally I worked for dentists while I was in high school. I went to dental hygiene school while I was working on my, mas- my bachelor's. I was still doing clinical hygiene, practiced for a number of years, went into dental sales. I was with Euphredi for 10 years and then decided that I really liked education. So for the last... Uh, 20 years, I have been a national speaker. And prior to the pandemic, I did about, you know, 40 programs a year. So I was really crisscrossing the country, actually all of North America, going up to Canada a lot, and just having an amazing time engaging, you know, with hygienists and dentists. Um, Usually my courses were either workshops for 20 to 30 people or lectures up to 600 people. And then once the pandemic came, I went virtual and I had anywhere from a thousand to 2,700 on my virtual courses. So it's been an interesting change in the last nine months. Wow. That's, that's a lot of participants. I mean, you're yeah. clearly the real deal. Um, you're not brand new to this. Um, I'm not. So we're thrilled to have you here. And I know that you can offer our audience a great deal of value today. Um, let's jump right into our show. Um, let's talk about um, some problems that you're seeing uh, in practices uh, with patients uh, and kind of how you see that affecting the industry. So, Patrick, one of the biggest problems I have is there are so many products on the market that we as clinicians even have a hard time keeping up with it. Me, as someone who I claim to be an expert on it, I, I'm constantly talking to the companies because every week, they're bringing out new products. But what's really concerning to me is that they all the companies have what we call our therapeutic products, which we are they're sold to us as clinicians. They People come in and detail us in the office. They have the, all their advertisements and journals to tell us all about them. But what I'm more afraid of is all the other stuff, the stuff that the big bucks, you know, the companies don't tell us about, like charcoal and coconut oil products that and that they're selling and hemp oil products that they're selling, as well as products that other companies are out there promoting directly to the consumer. So unless we ask the right questions of our patients, we might not get the answers we're looking for to find out what they're actually using. I find that they're, especially since the pandemic, they're going on to Amazon and they're doing all their own research and trying to find all these crazy products that claim to do all kinds of things. And in reality, they don't. So that's what scares me the most. So that's why I introduced a new course called Don't Get Caught With Your Pants Down, where I talk about all of these crazy products. So let's talk about some of these products. And first of all, let's back up. Let's talk about I understand that perhaps if we're not asking the right questions, we're not getting the right answers. So if we're not asking patients, if dentists, if uh, hygienists, um, if assistants are not asking the patients, hey, are you using any products that um, you've gotten from outside of this office? Um, I could see how that would be a problem if we're not asking that question. They're not going to necessarily know to answer it. Um, my guess is some of these products that may be uh, when the patient orders the product themselves, they th- may think, hey, I probably shouldn't tell my dentist about this. Um, so how do you kind of overcome that? So can you talk about those things a little bit? Um, so instead of just saying, are you using Crest or Colgate or one of the, the names that we know and trust, 
you need to ask more open-ended questions. Try to really find out exactly what they're using. Maybe ask them to bring it in. Maybe ask them to take a picture of it and send it to you or bring it with them the next time they come in. And the reason you'll know this is because let's say somebody has been a low risk patient, never had a cavity. And now all of a sudden they come in and if all these things are happening, you might start to see some stain that you never saw before. You might see them getting demineralization or cavities or something. So it, the question really has to be asked, what have you changed? What are you using that's different than what I gave you the last time? And they might say, oh, well, I, you know, it's still a Colgate product or it's still a Crest product, but it's something that I found in the grocery store, something I saw at Whole Foods or, or somewhere that might be more of an alternative product, but not a therapeutic product. So it may be from a brand name company, but not have all the special ingredients that we want our patients to have. So I have to imagine, I, I know some of these and some of the more popular controversial products. Um, I'm not have you tried say, them? I'm not going to say whether there's one in my house or not, but uh -oh. <laughs> um, there may have been, there may be, I'm not sure. But let me, let me, here's, here's, I think part of the problem is if a patient comes in and says, Hey doc, I'm trying this coconut shell charcoal powder toothpaste. And uh, what do you think about that? And if the doctor or the hygienist isn't aware of the product, how are they supposed to, how are they supposed to give any feedback or any well, information? They need to do, that's why, that's the beauty of this course I give because we can, I can explain all these different products. And then what we need to do is go directly to those manufacturers and look for the evidence look to see where their clinical trials done on these products. Or if there aren't, we know that there are, the ADA just came out with a statement lately that said there is no evidence that shows that charcoal is safe and health, you know, healthy for us to use. However, you made that statement, you know, if the patient comes in and says, I tried something, my comment to a patient who really wants to use a charcoal product as an example would be, let me at least direct you to some that I know are safe. So here's the difference. If somebody goes out on YouTube and sees a video on charcoal and goes out and buys those little charcoal tablets and they crush them up and they put water in them and they start brushing their teeth, those are really dangerous. But if they buy the, the um, for instance, there's Colgate, there's Crest, there's Curaprox, and there's Hello that make, all four of those companies make a charcoal product that is safe. It doesn't mean it's therapeutic, but sure. they're not going to hurt themselves if they use it. So I would try to sway them into trying one that I know is safe versus one that's not safe. We do have studies that show that if you brush too hard with those tablets and stuff, that you will actually abrade the enamel of the tooth. So that's a concern. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me, what are some steps right now? I mean, obviously, our practices, our listeners can reach out to you. I'm on your website, judybendit.com. Great source of information. You're obviously an expert uh, who knows what they're doing. Um, but what are some steps that they can take today, right now, um, to kind of get themselves on track and make sure that they're they're not stuck with their pants down? So the first thing is on my website, there's a tab that says product links. If you go to that link, it'll show you every product that's therapeutically safe for you to use. You'll see a whole section on toothbrushes, toothpaste, mouthwash. If you click on the product, it will take you directly to that company so you can get more information for yourself. I recommend if you have a local sales rep that you have a great relationship with, ask them to bring in some of the local, some of the reps to do lunch and learns with you so that you can learn about some of these products. Read your journals, you know, sign up for the newsletters through dental, uh, through Hygiene Town, through um, Dental Products Report. I mean, I read all of those journals from cover to cover every single month to learn about all the new products that are out there. And then I do some research every once in a while. I'll just out it for fun, go to Google and type in new toothpaste or new toothbrushes just to see what the consumer is saying. And I think we need we can learn from all of that and then contact the local companies to find out, hey, what do you think about this? Is this safe? Yeah, excellent advice. I, I do see and I hear people talk about, oh, I can use this because it's all natural. And this isn't just specific to dentistry. It's everything. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of really awesome products are all natural, like mercury, great all natural products. Cyanide mm -hmm. is a lovely one. Lead, mm -hmm. that's another great uh, mm -hmm. all natural product. So I think that all natural label in consumers' mind is very dangerous. 
Yeah, it is. And just as an example, like some people, there's some products out there called, there's a pickle flavored toothpaste, a bacon flavored. Hold on and one a, second. A pickle flavored toothpaste? Yes. Okay. Pickle, bacon, and um, cake flavored. And they Crazy. say they're much better than brushing with the real thing. Well, like the one is vanilla frosting. And the scary thing about it is that, you know, it's a $5 tube. People buy it as a gag gift. But if you read like the Amazon reviews, people say, oh, my God, it's the best toothpaste I've ever used. I use it every day now. Sure. And I'm like, you know, that's a problem right. because people don't under the consumer doesn't understand. And until the, the clinician talks to them and, you know, just saying, do you brush and floss every day isn't the an way to answer it anymore. You have to ask and delve into what the patients are really doing. Yep. And that's what the patients want to. I mean, the patients want that relationship with you. They want you asking the questions. They want to know that you care. Um, and I think it's just a, it's a great way to, um, you know, build that relationship and then, uh, you know, outside of their dental health. I mean, it's that personal relationship with them. Uh, Judy, anything else to add? Oh, I could talk all day, but I think <laughs> your audience only is limited to what, like 10 or 15 minutes. So Yeah, we try to keep um, it fast. We try to give people the information they want. Yeah, so I have lots really of different to topics that I talk about. So maybe we can talk another time about something else. Yeah, you know, I would love to have you back on. Our podcast is all natural, so uh, it is safe. Uh, yeah, but we would, we would definitely love to have you back on. It's, a, it's an interesting subject. And again, I really uh, welcome my guest and... Uh, you know, I know you do as well to visit your website, judybendit.com. And let me spell that, J-U-D-Y, and then a last name, Bendit, B-E-N-D-I-T.com, judybendit.com. Uh, check her out. Judy, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for joining us on today's episode. Did you know you can weigh in on today's topic on Facebook? Search The Dental Brief on Facebook or visit our website, dentalbrief.com and just follow the link. We look forward to having you join us again on another episode of The Dental Brief.